All right, so we are now recording this meeting or this uh, lesson, I guess. So what we're going to do now is we are going to go over to the slides. And yesterday we did slides one through eight. And now we're going to go through uh, slides nine through 22, I believe, if memory serves. And so we're going to introduce a few new, uh, few new concepts here. And these are concepts that you will be carrying forward, not just today, not just in this class, but for the rest of your accounting and business career. So the T-account. The T-account is a tool that accountants use. Do I use it? I still use this all the time. If I have to work out anything, rather than working it out in my head, I use T-accounts because that way I can easily track what's happening in any kind of an account. So it's used as a learning tool, but it's also used uh, professionally as a management tool. And so there's two terms here, debit. Remember that video yesterday, that ever fun, catchy one? Debit to the left, credits to the right, debit to the left, credits to the right. Here, we see that that's always gonna hold true, right? We're gonna put our debits to the left here and our credits to the right here. So account title, what do we mean by this? Well, this could be cash, it could be accounts receivable, it could be supplies, accounts payable, owner's investment, owner's withdrawals, it could be something like sales revenue, unearned revenue, prepaid expenses, whatever the case may be. Now, no matter what kind of an account you get, debits are always gonna be on the left-hand side, credits are always going to be on the right-hand side. And you're going to get lots and lots of practice with these over the next uh, couple of weeks. All right, so it's a learning tool. It's something that we use in industry. We set it up, and you'll see it's called a T account because we've got the top bar, and then we've got the uh, vertical uh, bar here, so it looks like a T. And so we just put the account name up top, and we always know debits are on the left-hand side, credits are on the right-hand side. And that's always going to hold true no matter what kind of account we're looking at. So we use these accounts to add things up, right? So we can see what's going on in an account. Because if you think about your own bank account, you have money coming in and out of that account on a pretty regular basis, right? Usually when you're a student, you have more money coming out than going in. But when you're working, you do get money that's popping in and out all the time. And if you think about a business account, where people are always depositing money, withdrawing money, depositing money, withdrawing money, it can be pretty hard to keep track of what's going on. So the T account here that we're looking at is for a brand new business, and I know that because the owners just put in $10,000, and I also know that because this is the exact same example that we saw in chapter one, where we have the exact same person starting this business. So we've actually seen all of these numbers before. These are the exact same numbers, uh, exact same transactions that we saw in chapter one. So uh, cash is a debit account, and I'll teach that to you here in just a moment. All right, so cash is what's called a debit account, which means we, uh, whenever we debit cash, it's going to go up, it increases. Whenever we credit cash, it'll decrease. And again, I'll teach you all of this here in a few minutes. So how do I read this? Well, anything that's on the left hand or debit side, because this is a debit account, increases. So here, I can see that the owner put in 10,000, plus we received money for 2,200, plus we received collection accounts receivable for 1,900. Then we spent money on purchase of supplies, we spent money on rent, we spent money on salary, we spent money paying our debts, our accounts payable, and the owner spent $600 uh, paying themselves. So here, I just add these up and I subtract these numbers, and so that'll give me an ending balance of $8,400. These items right here, total increases, less decreases, total decreases. This is here for more illustrative purposes. Generally what we do is we add up on, because this is a cash account, debit account, we add up on this side, subtract on this side, and that gives us the balance. Now we're not gonna do that with all accounts. If we have a credit account, which again I'll show you here in just a few minutes, if we have a credit account, then we would add up this side and subtract this side. And I'll explain that when we get to a better example. All right, so going on there, let's take a look at our theory. So just like I taught you in chapter one, left shoe, right shoe, left shoe, right shoe, our debits always have to equal our credits. Again, think back to the fun video from yesterday. Remember when they're talking about balancing their transactions? 
When they're balancing their transactions, they're making sure their debit entries equal their credit entries. Their left shoes equal their right shoes. So we're continuing on with the theory just as we learned it in chapter one. You already know you have to have two sides to every equation. This is the exact same thing. Only now we're starting to talk about debits and credits. So as in chapter one, nothing's changed here. We always evolve the chapters, we don't change them. All right, so every transaction affects at least two accounts. And you've seen this in chapter one. So far in chapter one, we only had one example where there's three accounts. And if you think back to Thursday, we did an entry where uh, an owner put in cash, they put in equipment. And so we showed cash going up, we showed equipment going up, and then we showed equity going up, the owner's investments. And so we know a minimum of two accounts will always be impacted. But as we saw last week, sometimes more than two. And generally in this course, we'll only see three accounts being impacted. But every single equation, or rather every single entry, our debits will always equal our credits. Uh, actually, if there's one thing I want you to remember out of today's lesson, right, the, probably the most important thing from today's lesson is your debits always have to equal your credits. Uh, because I do see some students, when we start doing the exercises, will try and show just a debit entry but no credits, or credits but no, no debits. Right? So as it states here, debits equals credits always. And the example that I've given you before that I'll continue to use, can you walk around outside with just one shoe on? No. You're, the system is broken, if that's the case. If you're wandering around with one shoe, you're basically going in circles. All right, so the exact same thing here. In the real world, you have to have two shoes on all the time, and here you have to have uh, debits equals credits. So now let's look at some theory here. I'm, not, I'm just going to quickly uh, look at this one. We have certain accounts where debits will increase them and credits will decrease them, and others where credit, where credit will increase them and debits will decrease. I'm not going to stay on this slide because our next uh, slide here is a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful study, uh, study slide. Uh, I put the page number in here. If you have your textbook handy, and I'll give you a, a moment to do this, go to page 87. Page 87 is your friend. Your page 87 in accounting is your best friend for the next uh, two weeks. All right, you already know about page 20 where we have sample financial statements. This exact table is on page 87, table or exhibit 2.8. And this page tells us everything we need to know about our debits and credits, when they move up and when they move down. All right, I'm going to give you a moment. So I'll give you a minute. It's 11.12 here. I'm going to wait until 11.13, then I'll go on. Make sure you grab your textbook and go to page 87. All right, so I'm hoping you have your textbook and you have it open to page 87 and you have bookmarked it or put a sticky pad or sticky note on it or something along those lines because you will definitely be turning to this page for the next little while. Now, this is something you're going to have to memorize. And I'm going to go through a tool uh, quite quickly here uh, in a slide or two that's going to show you, going to give you a hand memorizing. It's gonna, kind of a handy uh, little acronym that we're going to use called ALCRU. But to foreshadow that, we can see our different types of accounts. And we looked at this yesterday in Quick Study 2.1. We have asset accounts, so cash accounts receivable, liabilities, accounts payable, notes payable, owner's equity, which is their opening capital, owner's investments. We have owner's withdrawals, which is straightforward there. We have our revenues and our expenses. Now, this is really where accounting is just like a board game. For some of these accounts, debits increase them. 
For some of these accounts, credits decrease them. For some, credits increase and debits decrease. So we have to memorize, and there's no other way of doing it, we have to memorize which accounts are debit accounts and which accounts are credit accounts. And this is where this page is quite good. So a debit account means debits increase them. A credit account means credits increase them. So if we look at this, assets such as cash are debit accounts. So debits increase it. So every time I make a bank deposit, it's a debit. Every time I uh, make a withdrawal, it decreases the account. So for asset account, I'm sorry, for debit accounts, assets, debits increase, credits decrease. Liabilities are the exact opposite. Right, credits increase. So as they take out more and more loans, uh, right, the credits increase. And as I pay the loans, I'll be debiting those accounts. And as I pay them off, I debit them. And so that's a decrease. Equity is a credit account. So credits increase, debits decrease. Owners withdrawals, debits increase, credits decrease. Revenues, credits increase, debits decrease. Expenses, debits increase, credit decreases. Now keep in mind, nothing can go sideways, right? Diagonally or anything along those lines. There's only two directions, up and down, that's it. No other direction, just up, just down. So this slide here is a great little reference that will tell us how we're going to treat the accounts. Now this will make a lot more sense as we continue to work through this because I've got some study aids here that we're going to uh, go through as a group. So normal balances, right? So normal balances, if it's a debit account, right? Then debits will increase. If it's a credit account, then credits will uh, increase. So as we can see here, assets equals liabilities plus equity. So assets, normally a debit balance, both liabilities and equity or capital are normally credit balances. Right? Now I'm just gonna give you a quick example on how and why this works. Let's say I took out a $10,000 loan. I went to the bank and took out a $10,000 loan. Now in my entry, I know debits have to equal credits. So the bank gave me money, so my cash would go up. So I would debit cash $10,000, but then where did the money come from? What well, came from the bank? So I owe the bank money, that's accounts payable. So I put a corresponding $10,000 here in liabilities that are accounts payable or notes payable. And that would show me that I received $10,000 from the bank. So my cash went up, but the amount of money that I received from the bank went up. Conversely, let's just say I put $5,000 into my business bank account. Well, again, the business bank account goes up, so I would debit cash. Where did it come from? It came from owner's investments. That's a credit account. So I would show cash going up $5,000. I would show capital going up $5,000. And that tells me that I have cash because I put money, owner's investment, into my farm, into my business. Now, this is that wonderful little study guide that um, I was telling you about. Now, these slides are really important. The most important thing I want you to get out of today is that no matter what, every entry, your debits have to equal your credits. That There's no way accounting works if that, uh, if that doesn't happen. So the L crew we're going to work on today, we're going to use today, work on is the wrong word. We're going to use this today, and we're going to use this quite extensively here for the next um, couple of weeks. And so what I'm going to actually have you guys do in about five minutes is I'm going to have you guys take a little bit of a break. You're going to pull out a sheet of paper, and then you're going to practice this. So what we're going to do, L crew stands for assets, liabilities, capital, revenues, expenses, withdrawals. So these are different types of accounts. So we just have an acronym now called ALCRU. Again, ALCRU, assets, liabilities, capital, revenues, expenses, and withdrawals. So the first thing you're gonna do, and again, we'll go through this once as a group, and then I'm gonna have you guys break and do this at least five times by yourself. First off, you write ALCRU, just as we see it, A-L-C-R-E-W. And usually I won't write the whole world, whole world, whole word out. I'll usually just write the, the uh, letter. So A-L-C-R-E-W. Again, assets, liabilities, capital, revenues, expenses, withdrawals. And now we're going to state what kind of balance are they. 
Well, you'll see here, step two, AEW assets, expenses, and withdrawals are all debit accounts. Now, how do I remember this? I just think A and W. All right, where are you going for uh, breakfast? Over to A and W, A E W. A E W assets, expenses, and withdrawals are, are, are the debit accounts, All right? So these are accounts that debits will increase them and credits will decrease them. Well, we only have two types of accounts, debit accounts and credit accounts. So if A and W, assets, expenses, and withdrawals are debit accounts, then the remainder have to be credit. It's one or the other, right? It's two sides of a coin here. If it's not heads, it has to be tails, right? So we have uh, debit, debit, debit down here. And so the remaining liabilities, capital, and revenue are credit accounts. So we've listed our account type. We've listed the normal balance. Then after that, we want to identify how accounts go up and then how accounts will go down. So I'm just going to bring this slide up here. So how will accounts go up? Well, if it's a debit account, so A, E, W, A and W, assets, expenses, withdrawals, or debit accounts, which means for these accounts to increase, I have to debit the account. So I debit my assets, I debit my expenses, and I debit my withdrawals. For credit accounts, for those to go up, I have to credit them. So I'll credit liabilities, capital, and revenue to increase them. Now, as I mentioned earlier, accounts only go up or down. That's it. So if they're not going up, then they have to go down. So how would I make a debit account go down? So how would I make my assets, my expenses, and my withdrawals go down? I would credit them. How would I make my debit accounts, I'm sorry, how would I make my credit accounts go down? I would debit those accounts. So this little matrix here, this little study guide, is a fantastic cheat sheet, all right? Study tool, however we want to call it. This is one of those things, if this was a board game, this little matrix right here would be on a little sheet of paper that for the first uh, dozen or so times you played the game, you'd always be looking. Okay, well, how do I move this one? How do I move this one? Again, after you've done it about a dozen times, you'll just start to memorize it because this is the only thing that we can do is memorize it. There's nothing intuitive about this, nothing intuitive. All right, it's pure memorization, all right? Just like your old uh, multiplication tables. All right, so I'm not gonna go over that right now. All right, it's basically just a summary. So those are the slides that I want to go over. So what we're going to do now, I'm going to show you guys this once, and then we're going to take about a five-minute break because I want you guys to practice this before we move forward. I'm just going to go over to our in-class solutions. So I just have the in-class solutions from yesterday and what we're going to do here today. And I'm just going to type in Alcru. Now, if we were face-to-face, -face, I would have actually brought blank paper into the classroom with me. And right now, I'd be handing out blank paper, just a normal printer paper, and we'd be writing the, uh, all over it. Right? And what would we be writing? This Alcru matrix. And here is how we do it. I type in A for assets, L for liabilities, C for capital, R for uh, revenue, E for expenses, W for withdrawals. I could write the whole thing out, right? but we have uh, the slide there, so I'm not going to worry about that. And when we do this uh, going forward, uh, I won't write out assets, liabilities, capital, revenues, expenses, withdrawals. I'll always write out Alcru. Then over here, I'm just going to type. And which ones are the debit accounts? The debit accounts, A and W, A E W, A and W are always the debit accounts. So we're going to call it DR for debit. DR for debit, DR for debit. And there's only two types of accounts, debit accounts and credit accounts. But before I type those ones in, let's go increase and decrease. So how, how do these accounts go up? Well, they're debit accounts. They go up with uh, debits. If they go up with debits, then they must go down with credits. All right, again, they only have two choices. Now, if they're not debit accounts, so we know liabilities, capital, and revenue, 
If they're not debit accounts, they have to be credit accounts. So how do we make a credit account go up? Go up, we do it with credits. How do we make a debit account go down? I'm sorry, a credit account go down? We do it with debits. All right, so I'm gonna do that one more time. I write out L crew. A, assets, liabilities, capital, revenue, expenses, withdrawals. Then say the type. Oh, well, A and W, A W are a debit account. Debit account, debit account. And then I can say, how do these accounts go up? And how do they go down? Well, debit accounts go up with debits. And they go down with credits. If they're not debits accounts, then they have to be credit accounts. And how do credit accounts go up? With credits. How do debit accounts go down? With debits. All right, I'm going to stop recording. So that's the actual lecture here. I'm going to take some questions now. I don't want to record while you guys are asking me questions. So if you're watching this uh, later on, we're just going to work on uh, quick study 2.2 two and 2.3 for the remainder of the day. And then I'll take up this theory again tomorrow.